Welcome back to Pathology by Ranjitaya YouTube channel once again. So what I'm going to try and do is try to cover all the important uh, PYQs that have been asked in the NEET PG exam starting right from 2018. I think this will give you a good coverage of six uh, years of papers and I hope uh, that will help you in the upcoming NEET PG exam. So let's start. So the following cells are in the lymph node are indicated for which of the following disease. Right? So it's a, it's a very simple thing here. If you look at this, you have a very classical giant cell multinuclear giant cell and if you see you ha do have an intranuclear pink eosinophilic inclusion and somewhere here though not clear you do have intracytoplasmic inclusion as well intranuclear eosinophilic and intracytoplasmic eosinophilic inclusion i want you to think of measles though measles are very very rare in the lymph node but this is a classical warthen finkelde giant cell which is suggestive of a measles infection so that will be the right answer i would expect a similar question uh, happening with uh, respect to measles pneumonia because that's where a it's a little bit more common than a lymph node or any other organ, right? Next question. Which of the following is the most common extra gonadal site for germ cell tumor? See, GCD can happen anywhere in the midline. There is a GCD uh, germ cell tumor which is happening in the brain. We call them germinoma, right? Apart from that, you will have mediastinum as the commonest extra peritoneal organ. I'm sure you must have seen in pediatric textbook, sacrococcygeal teratomas, right? Uh, uh, big uh, mass in a child which is uh, there in the prone portion, right? That's also possible there. Uh, in the midline, it's possible. Germinoma is seen as it's possible. But the most common extra gonadal tumor, extra gonadal germ cell tumor will have to be in mediastinum, right? Let's go to the next question. Identify the condition represented in the below figure. Right? This is a classical lung. You can see from the grooves and the hyla structure. What you can see here is multiple tiny dots. I'm sure you know the answer even before looking at the options. Yes, you are right. It's a classical case of miliary tuberculosis, right? Miliary, the seeds, right? The millet like seeds, which is there, which is a progressive form of secondary tuberculosis, which can happen in the liver, which can happen in the spleen, especially happens when there's low immunity kind of spreads across, right? Which of the following is the is an epithelial tumor of the stomach, right? So here, uh, the better answer here would be gastric adenocarcinoma. Just lymphoma is definitely not epithelial. Carcinoma is a neuroendocrine tumor, right? So an epithelial tumor of the stomach has to be a gastric adenocarcinoma. Uh, just a, a little bit about gastric adenocarcinoma to remember, we have the Lorentz classification, intestinal type and the zignet ring cell type. Zignet ring cell type is very, very important. You have the nucleus in the corner looking like a zignet ring. This especially happens due to the e cadran mutation, right? Or the CDH1 loss. Next. So the following is the maximum duration for trali to occur after blood transfusion. Trali happens within 6 hours. So the maximum duration would be ideally 6 hours. Trali is supposed to have a 2-hit pathogenesis. In a person who already is suffering from sepsis, when you give a transfused product, the HLA mismatch is going to make the neutrophils kind of stick into the capillaries of the lungs because there's already an inflammation going on like a sepsis. So that will trigger an inflammatory cascade in the lung, which is going to kind of result in the ARDS, that is trally, transfusion associated lung, acute lung injury. Trally and TACO is a very common thing for you to differentiate. One feature I would help uh, me to differentiate trally versus TACO, trally will have fever. Because trally is an infectious pathology, will have fever. TACO is in circulatory overload, TACO will not have fever. There are a few common areas between trally and TACO, but fever will easily help you to differentiate. And trally will have hypotension tacos volume overload will have hypertension these are two things which can easily help you to differentiate in even as five six line clinical scenario fine the next prolonged bleeding time is seen in i don't think uh, you will see these type of questions in uh, 2025 epg but it's a classical answer of one willebrand disease even in this inict you had the most common inherited one uh, bleeding disorder that also goes for one willebrand disease in one willebrand disease in few variants where the factor 8 level is very very low you might also have prolonged clotting time next single most important long-term limitation of cardiac transplant see here the long-term limitation means indirectly i'm talking about a chronic graft rejection because that's what determines the long-term limitation it's not just for cardiac transplant for any transplant for the matter if i can survive the acute phase by giving immunosuppressants Chronic is something which is inevitable and chronic graft rejection is always a vascular phenomenon which happens due to allograft arteriopathy. It's simple, no? let's say I'm uh, transplanting a kidney or a heart or any organ. So slowly and steadily, by default, there will be a little bit amount of damage happening to the endothelium of the transplanted organ because that's in constant exposure to the host antibody serum plasma everything right so by default what happens over the period of time a vessel which is supposed to be like this 
becomes fibrotic becomes sclerosed and becomes like this with almost a nil lumen that kind of causes tissue destruction healing by fibrosis which is a hallmark of any chronic damage right so graft arteriopathy is one of the important reason for chronic graft rejection and that becomes the long term limiting factor for cardiac transplantation as well uh, one liner myotonic dystrophy is involved in chromosome 19 again it's an out of work questions uh, if you can remember repeats which comes in one line i do remember them otherwise ignore them uh, it's not much of a concern because these days there's more of scenario based question compared to one line as like this right cowden syndrome is with peten right peten hamartomata syndrome is cowden syndrome there is an increased risk of uh, colonic tumors apart from that you do have increase in risk of your uh, uh, breast cancers as well right uh, wt1 wilms syndrome wt1 is as with both your uh, wagr syndrome and your dennis dash syndrome right P53, leaf romney syndrome, RA is a proto-oncogene, well it's not syndromic, but the most common proto-oncogene mutated and overall the most common gene mutated is your P53, right? Last for today's question, which of the following is the most common cause of agranulocytosis? The answer would be a drug toxicity. Even, even if the question asks dengue fever or something of that sort, agranulocytosis is going to be primary to drug toxicity, even infections be there in the option, right? So that is all for today. What I'm going to do is, I want you to guys to follow this channel for the next 10 days or 15 days till you need exam. I'll start discussing few questions, all the previous equations like this little by little so that you will get a hold of it and you'll ace the exam. Follow me on the Instagram page. What I'll do is I'll give a solved paper of this along with the right answer and a little bit of explanation so that you'll be able to quickly revise through if you don't get time at the last moment to go through it. A kind of a notes, right? Follow me on the Instagram and wherever this post is there, comment uh, patho the pdf will automatically come to you right thank you guys see you soon bye bye